Well, hello, hello, General Hospital Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for Friday, July the 26th, 2024. Friday, July the 26th. Well, it's been all over the internet. I'm sure most of you've seen it, uh, commented on it. The actor Rick Hurst will be reprising the role of Rick La Lansing, Molly Lansing Davis's father. He's coming back. Um... Let's see. Tell you what, though, stay away, Liz, because you know he, you, he was, he was like dynamite to you. Woo, man, stay away from Rick. Um, but my guess is he's either coming back to help Molly with the custody issue. He'll probably represent Molly in court because Alexis won't, and she shouldn't. She's not going to pick sides with her daughters, but. Her baby daddy will. He's going to take the side of Molly, which he should. That's her father. Now, he'll probably be going up against Diane because Christina's Sonny's, uh, Sonny's daughter. So it's going to be Diane versus Rick. Diane is better. Diane is better. Actually, Alexis used to be better than Rick too, but we all know why she can't do it. So anyway, that's interesting. He's coming back. And, you know, I thought he was going to be the head of, head of Pikeman. I really did. Now, Rick, was he a DA? I think at one point he was a DA. Because I wouldn't be surprised if they don't bring him to prosecute Sonny. If, in fact, charges are being brought up against Sonny. But I just always thought Pikeman was going to be Rick Lancey. But we shall see, right? We shall see, because he's coming back. Uh, let's let's see what else happened. Okay, so we have speaking of, of Molly. Molly goes over to Christina's house, and Christina's so happy, telling her about you know how great she thought the the uh, interview went. Did she see it? What did you think about it? Christina was just Christina, and Molly was Molly. So finally, Molly says, uh, yeah. So she goes, wait, you're not saying anything. You didn't like the interview? She goes, Molly says, you know what? A lot of people I'm sure liked it. And probably thought it went well. You know, here you are, you and Blaze told your truth. And when it came to responding about the baby, you made it seem like you that this was you and Blaze's baby and it was private. And in my mind, honestly, in my mind, I'm thinking, how did she insinuate or infer that it was her and Blaze's baby, right? I, I didn't get that. Now, maybe somebody else did. Now we do all know, or we all do know, Christina wants to keep that baby. But to me, as far as the interview goes, she did not make it seem that way, but that's just me. Molly said, one simple statement out of your mouth could have cleared up everything. And Christina's thinking, I didn't think there was anything that needed clearing up because I let the topic of the baby be off the table. I didn't comment on it. Right? Molly said, you could have said, I'm a surrogate for my sister and her partner. And Christina looked at her and said, you wanted me to say that? To put your IBF on blast like that? You should have told me before I did the interview, which was a stupid statement because Molly said, we didn't even know you were going to do the interview. So how could I have told you before you did the interview? And then Christina just kind of looked. So she goes, you know what? Anyway, Christina, here, this is something that needed to have been taken care of. You know, actually, mom wanted us to take care of this in the beginning. You're about to have the baby very, very soon. So in a matter of weeks. So let's get this out the way now. And Christina's looking like what? Molly pulls out the papers for her to terminate her rights to the baby. Christina says, you want me to terminate 
She goes, I want you to relinquish your rights to the baby. Christina said, you know what, Molly, what's interesting, the word relinquish is not in any of this paperwork. Terminate is. Because if you relinquish something, that means there's a possibility of you getting it back. But terminating ends it. Molly says, Christina, you've always known you were going to have to terminate your parental rights so I could legally adopt the baby. You've always known that. So what's the difference in you signing the papers now than in a few weeks from now? So Christina's like, well, no. I mean, I have concerns, Molly. I have concerns. And Molly's like, wait, what concerns do you have, Christina? Well, you and TJ, what if you two don't stay together? Then it'd be T TJ and I would be the only ones that would have rights to this baby. You know, I, I, I mean, I'm... I don't know. And then I'm and I'm thinking, okay, if Christina terminated her parental rights and Molly adopts the baby, but Molly cannot adopt this baby until after Christina has it, right? It's not done in advance. Now, perhaps in the they do have some kind of paperwork in the Temporary paperwork, perhaps the baby goes over because I don't know how surrogate relationships work. I do know surrogates hand over the baby at the time of birth. But as far as when is the adoption process final in a surrogacy? Maybe there's an attorney that's listening in the comment corner. You know, we, we shall see, right? I mean, I don't know. What, how does that happen? Because it's still going to take some time for. Molly to be able to adopt this child. I, you know, that, that's interesting to me. But here's the deal. If Christina signed over the paperwork, Molly adopts the baby, Molly and TJ split up, TJ just does not automatically get the baby. Because legally, Molly would have adopted the baby. And in the eyes of the courts, Molly is that baby's legal mother. So now if she and TJ split up, they don't have to be married because they're not married. They're, they're domestic partners. She and TJ break their partnership. Molly is still the baby's legal mother. TJ is still the baby's natural father. They would have to go through course custody like anybody else, right? Christina is not thinking like that for some strange reason. And then she says, uh, and you know what, Molly? Quite frankly, because Molly says, no, wait, no. This hesitation, Christina, let's just call it for what it is. One of the reasons why you wanted people to think that you and Blaze's baby. All over the internet, you got the community trying to get behind you, wondering what onesie to buy the baby my baby. And I'm like, girl, it ain't your baby yet. Right? She goes, tell the truth, Christina. You want to keep the baby. And Christina just looked at her. She goes, well, I do have concerns, Molly. I have concerns. If you and TJ break up, she goes, TJ and I are not breaking up. Christina took one argument, right? TJ and I are fine, Christina. Well, you guys are arguing all the time. She goes, it's not all the time. And when we argue, it's about you. <laughs> you know? And so Christina says, well, okay, then no. If, if I have to be honest, then I kind of have to think Blaze and I would be better parents to this baby than you and TJ. And I thought, here you go. Now, you know, Blaze told you point blank. She was not going to raise and parent that child with you. You and Blaze may have be weathering this storm that's happening right now. 
but uh, by no means is Christina and Blaze solid. No, by uh, no means to say we'd be better at raising the baby than you two. Well, that was like, to me, okay, that's an untrue statement. Molly and TJ, to me, have these really rose-colored fairy tale gla uh, glasses on about parenthood. But Christina has it on about motherhood. She's honestly thinking Blaze is going to do this with her. Is Christina thinking and prepared to do it all on her own? I don't know. I honestly don't know. This is going to be a very good, good battle. This really is. I'm, I'm interested to see how this is going to turn out, everybody. So now we have Sonny in there seeing Carly. And he goes, why were you pretty much daring Kate to arrest you? She goes, I have my reasons. She goes, Carly, what, what's going on? Okay, well, you know, um, when you were in Nixon Falls and I went to the meeting with the five families and I took over the organization, they have me on tape saying that I was now going to control your organization. And suddenly he's like, huh, you know? And he goes, but that was a, a while ago, a long time ago. Why are they, if they have, he goes, how'd they get that? He goes, somebody in the meeting was wearing a wire. Okay, so they've had this evidence all this time, Carly. Why are they coming at you right now? That doesn't make any sense. She said, uh, they weren't coming at me right now. Kate played the recording for Jason and Kate has been uh, controlling Jason's movements at the threat of sending me to prison. He was supposed to find out information on Pikeman and then the deal was supposed to be complete and then Jason would be, you know, out of the, you know, free of the agreement, but Kate has, has uh, reneged on it. And now it's coming after you, Sonny. He goes, John Kate has been trying to come after me for decades. He's, he never has, never will win. He's a loser. <laughs> you know, he's going on and on. And he goes, she goes, but he was using Jason as leverage. I mean, me as leverage over Jason. Jason was trying to keep me out of jail. Now you know why Jason was working with the FBI. And Sonny just looks. He's like, I will not let the mother of my little girl go to prison. Oh, he ain't letting it happen. He pretty much like Harley, he gonna take care of Kate. And she's like, Sonny, Sonny, I need you to stay calm. And she goes, what does Diane say? Is Diane, she goes, Diane she goes, knows about this. Diane has known about this. She and I have been trying to, you know, work on my case to see what my best defense would be. You know, Diane is, is knows. And he goes, okay. He goes, but do you know what? He says, I'm going to handle John Cates. And she goes, Sonny, Sonny, don't do anything. No, let's let Diane do her job. Don't do anything. And so Sonny knocked off the coffee cups off the tray in the room and the officer comes in and says, hey, what's going on in here? Because they were in the interrogation room. And Sonny gets up, he goes, I'm going to take care of John Cates. Saying this in front of the cops as he walks out. Carly's looking, she goes, Sonny, Sonny, no, Sonny, don't do not Sonny. And so the officer says, hey, 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 you can't leave this room. He goes, she says, get me Detective Dante Falconeri. Get him now for me, please. So Dante was in Anna's office visiting her. And so the, I guess the cop called him and Dante came in and, and Carly's like, Dante, da oh my God, Dante, you have to find Sonny. He is going after FBI agent Cates. And it, it's going to be bad. Dante, you have to stop him. And Dante's like, oh, 
right? He goes, do you, where is he? She goes, I don't know, but find him. Well, she goes, cause he's going to find Kate. Dante should know to go straight to Sonny's apartment first. Cause he's going to have to arm himself, which is exactly what he's doing. Exactly what he's doing. He's talking to Britt. And he says, Brick, and he says, find out where FBI agent Kate is right now. And so Brick is like, isn't he staying at the Metro Court? He goes, no, Carly kicked him out of the Metro Court. I need to find out where he's staying. So Brick is going to be on it. And Sonny takes his gun that was locked up and he's pointing it, trying to get his aim right, you know. His his non-medicated aim, right? Sonny, this is going to be what Ava needs. This is going to be what Ava needs uh, if he completely goes off the rails, right? And I think it's going to happen. It's going to look like it's going to happen until we find out. The only thing that's going to save Sonny is the medication tapering. That's the only thing that's going to save him. But you know what? They may have him do some good damage before that before that happens. And at this point, I'm pretty much okay with that. You know, do your worst, Sonny. Do your worst. Now, here's what's realistically stupid. What's stupid is Michael goes to Nina. Says she owes him do this favor for him. He wants her to introduce him to Senator Kalki, right? Because he wants Kalki to get Carly, you know, put the screws on rot rotten FBI agent Cates or, or whatever influence he has to get his mother off. And he goes, and I'll make it worth his while, you know, for this. And Nina says, so let me get this straight. You want to pay bribe pay money to a senator who has an untarnished record the one very one that's endorsing Drew you want me to make the introduction so I will be a co-conspirator now this relationship I've had my father had he and, 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 and McCaulkey have been friends since college I guess and she goes he's See me grow up. Well, girl, he's seen you in a coma for 30 years. That's what that is. Uh, you know, come on now. Uh, or 20 years in a coma for 20 years. So she says, uh, so if it comes out, not only is it a crime, but you're going to be the main one implicated unless you plan on trying to dump it all on me, which I'm not going to let happen. She says, you do know you're playing with fire. She goes, you want me to commit a crime to help Carly out of the consequences of a crime that she committed. And when Nina said it like that, I said, yeah, you know what? That's a pass. That's a hard pass. And he goes, well, I could tell you this. Willow would be very happy. And I, if my mom gets off, I'm going to make sure she knows you pretty much set this whole ball rolling to help that happen. That'll go a long way with Willow. And Nina says, you know, there is, there's hardly anything I wouldn't, everybody knows there's nothing I wouldn't do, you know, for me to have a relationship with my daughter, Willow, and to keep it on track. She goes, but you know what, Michael, this is diff this is going to be tricky. And she goes, and I'm going to tell you, you're going about this the wrong way. It is going to backfire on you. But you know what? She kind of like, don't say I'm not, I, I didn't try to help. So she picks up the phone call to uh, McCurkey on his private cell, arranges a lunch date and tells him, you know what? I'm going to bring a friend. You know, entry, you, you're going to like him. Very sharp and shrewd. So she's going to introduce Michael to him, right? Um, Michael, his big mistake, why isn't he talking to Diane to see what kind of defense can be mounted? I mean, he's just, he's doing a 
take control kind of Michael Corinthos, you know, he is, he, he's, he's, he's a sonny. He will pay off whoever he needs to pay off, bribe whoever he needs to bribe to get what he wants done. And that is Michael. But see, when it comes out, he better not tell uh, Willow because she might say, oh, that's illegal, Michael. And that might look bad on Drew. Oh, don't let anything look bad on Drew for his campaign. So they have Michael getting into making the wrong moves. And, and <laughs> last but not least, well, second to last but not least, we had Natalia. She came to see Blaze and Christina, but Blaze wasn't there. So she thanks Christina, because uh, Molly's gone, for the way that they handled the subject of her with grace. She says, I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that at all. So Christina says, you know, people have a right to their own opinion. You have a right to your own opinion, Natalia. But I do not have to like or agree with your opinion. And she says, and I don't. I don't agree with it, nor do I like it. And so um, Natalia says, you know, I understand. And she goes, and for you, I'm just, she goes, I'm actually impressed by the way you are able to, to be open-minded that people do have their own opinions and you're, you're pretty confident, you know, and, and, just self-confident about yourself and the the way she goes like Christina's like I don't let other people's opinions rule me and I'm thinking well that's Christina now Christina did then did but anyway so she just pretty much let her know you know there is no real like oh now we're best buds because they're not you know they they will be pleasant but there's no animosity Christina doesn't have animosity towards Natalia. And at this point, Natalia doesn't get against Christina. She's going to be busy working on mending the bridge, you know, with, with uh, Allie. So last but not least, this is what, what kills me. Kate has the nerve to go to Jason's room. And Jason's like, you have some nerve showing up here. And you stand there. The same look. You have Kate's, you know, uh, yeah, you know, you I know you want to help Carly. Well, you could still do that. And Jason says, he goes, because you know what? I could make sure you do something else for me. And I'll make sure that you can run right on back to your Carly. And Jason says, you reneged on the last deal. I brought you the head of Pikeman, gave you that information and you reneged. Why would I ever trust you to do anything? And Kate is like, well, you bring me Sonny Corinthos and you could have your precious Carly. So I said, see, here we go. Kate's is not worth his weight of his badge. He can't solve not one thing. He's telling a civilian, once again, who cracked the biggest cases, the Pikeman case. He wants him now to bring down one of the biggest mob bosses. So it could go under John Cates' not, belt notch again. Are you kidding me? We already know. Well, here's the deal. Diane and Jason were talking because they were talking about how crooked Cates is and how, you know, he, he has a vendetta. And so um, Diane said, short of completely discrediting Agent Cates, because if we could get him completely discredited, he that would go a long way for Carly's trial, you know, for Carly. 
Um, and so Jason says, you know what? I might be able to do that. I might be able to do that. Or, and I think he said, oh, I know someone who can help. And he, I know he's thinking about Anna, right? So he might just tell John Cates he'll, you know, get him information on Sonny in order to, to, to entrap Cates himself. Because realistically, Jason doesn't have to get information on Sunday, Sonny, which is like John Cates has said, you already know everything. Just tell me. And he puts the recorder down and Jason's like, Psh. so we're going to see how they handle that. Everybody, how is Jason going to handle this? He really, I don't know how he's going to handle it. We'll see. I can't figure out how they're writing this. You know, where are they going with that? I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, everybody, that is it for uh, Cliffhanger Friday. It wasn't a cliffhanger, but you know what? It was all right. It was a little something, something. Not too bad. Not too bad. I'm going to go to comment corner, comment corner. Let me start my trusty, dusty timer for comment corner. I got so many apps on my phone. Open up. Good Lord. Uh, here we go. Stopwatch. All right. Now, I'm going to start from the bottom and go to the top. Ron says, Kate will end up being kicked to the curb for false arrest. His obsession with Sonny has gone beyond the parameters of his job. He will lose everything. Uh, Denzel says, and I'm going to read part of Denzel's. Everybody go back and read the rest of Denzel's comments. Right on point, Denzel. Excellent. Denzel says, at this point, Jason, Jason should put his kids um, over and top uh, and stop helping Carly and Sonny, Sonny's nonsense. Uh, because watching that scene with Jason and Danny, I felt bad for Danny. Jason is just a bad father, in my opinion. At least Jocelyn stopped Jason from leaving Port Charles because Carly turned herself in which ain't surprised, which, which I ain't surprised. She uh, was really bold to approach annoying Kate and get herself arrested. Jagger at this point, uh, Kate, that ain't, J Jagger wouldn't act this way, the original actor. Uh, at this point, just needs his badge removed. I understand that he is on the right side of the law. Oh, really? I don't understand that. I really don't. I think he's acting. This Sonny Vendetta, Vendetta, that's all rogue. That's all personal. His superiors don't know that. He was sent there to protect, keep Sonny from getting killed, not build a case against him. Actually, he should be called back home. His boss needs to say, okay, we're done with that. You know, you in Cincinnati. Um, They should remove his badge and his gun. Uh... He uh, to be removed and believing in Ava's lies. Yeah, Kate, he says Jagger, but I call him Kate. Kate just needs to go away at this point. Uh, can't blame Molly for getting upset about Christina and Blaze's interview at the Paris Hilton um, at all whatsoever. Oh, you're thinking it's that you, you're more on Molly and TJ's side um, saying the baby is her, saying that the baby is hers. Well, Christina didn't say anything about the baby. She didn't. People know it's hers because it's growing in her belly. But she did not bring out it. Christina said nothing and addressed nothing outside of her and Blaze's relationship. And I ain't mad at Christina for that. Now, we all know Christina wants that baby. We all know that, right? And I'm happy she told Molly because Molly said, just sign the doggone papers and she didn't say doggone she's you know three letter word in begins with b a d and ends in m papers and christina looked at her and said no see excellent excellent no <laughs> and then denzel says yeah uh sonny's brother rick is coming back to town yes he is 
Uh, and then uh, Kamawat says, great recap. Enjoyed it uh, almost more than watching. Well, thank you. And then we have Dacia says, Willow should uh, shouting out to Michael and telling him that Drew tried to kiss her. Uh, and then Wendy says, Willow uh, needs or wants Drew real bad. Uh, he lit a fire in her. Drew is playing her like a symphony. He's going to have her in the palm of his hands. You see how he touched her hand? Uh, she can't wait. Yeah, and it's going to all be Willow's fault, and I won't feel sorry for her. Kamawat says, why hasn't Diane pushed Sunny to get tested? I know. I don't, I don't know why she has it. Lori says, I really enjoyed GH today, and I haven't seen... Oh, and I haven't said that in a long time. I know, Lori, it's getting pretty good. Uh, Denzel had another comment about, uh, but you still want to know who was the warden when uh, who that Anna was talking to? Just, you know, somebody there. They, didn't, he didn't, they really didn't say he was a warden. He was just a prison official. I hope it isn't the dude that's working for Mr. Brennan who was locked up in Pentonville um, but we just got to wait and see, uh, found out, but great, uh, review daily recaps, like always. Thank you, Denzel. Like the reviews in the videos and said how creepy Drew is. Um, I'm with you with that. Drew is uh, creepy. I don't even want to camera man. And I like, I mean, I've always said Cameron Matheson plays the one dimensional Ryan is Drew. But now I don't know what's happening, right? And I, I, you know, I don't know what's happening. And I love me some Ryan Lavery. Um, Natasha says, uh, Nakisha says, I think Michael Easton returning to days was just a rumor. Oh, okay. You know what? Could be. I haven't seen anything validating. Um, I could be wrong though. You know what? Who cares? I'm not going to watch days anyway. Um, P. Merle says, now things are getting interesting. It, uh, if looks could kill, Kate's would already be dead. Correct dose meds or not, Sonny is about to erupt. Yes, he is. P. Merle says, Drew is no, has no shame. I really, I'm really disliking him now. Willow should realize Drew is not backing off. I know. She should tell Michael uh drew crossed the line and she resisted willow i can't lie oh you sure can lie girl lie by omission that's what you're doing michael will believe her yes he would and try to decimate drew um and then michelle comments to p murrow no um he's not but mike wait no he's not but michael is not nina Michael will bring that pathetic, creepy all the way down. He's lurking around Michael and Willow. You talking about Drew? Um, he was pathetic. He knew they were going out there. Yeah, that was Drew. Drew. Drew couldn't let them have any peace. He could have came and looked for that watch when he saw they were gone. That was supposed to be because look, he wasn't going there that night, that late at night, to do his little town hall thing. Angela says, Christina did have Molly's best interest in mind, but not revealing the, by not revealing the pregnancy situation. But it will would have helped if she would have given Molly and TJ a heads up before going on TV. That that's a yes, that's a given. Knowing what questions would likely come up about her being pregnant and how sensitive and high strung everyone has been about the situation. Absolutely. A heads up would have been warranted and they everything would have gone off without a hitch. Although TJ and Molly would have had the nerve to say, don't do it. And then it's like, Girl, look, y'all, I was just giving you a heads up. I wasn't asking for permission. You know, I'm asking for permission. Aisha says, Willow needs to get herself in check. All this lighting up over Drew right now is going to make it much harder for Michael when, if not, not if he finds out about the kiss. Is Drew now just the embodiment of negative stereotypes 
of the political candidates. You know, I know. I don't know what they're doing with that. And then Michelle is answering Aisha, but we don't know anything about Drew's past, I know. I don't believe that he was a good person, period. He had to have a shady past um, for him to think it's okay to do what he's doing. Well, you know what? You might be right, uh, Michelle. You might be right. And, and Michelle writes a bunch more, and so did Aisha, about the Drew and Michael situation. Everybody go back. Listen, read it. Everybody, you guys gave some phenomenal comments in Comment Corner. Um, go back, everybody. Read Comment Corner. Comment on each other's comments. Um, this is it for me today with Comment Corner. Everyone have a phenomenal, phenomenal weekend.